Hey guys, I thought I would throw up a real quick little quickie quick in between readings tonight. Um, for those of you who are wondering about this eclipse, so if you want to, if you're someone who's, you know, intermediate level with astrology, fairly comfortable with understanding the four pillars, you know, you understand the planets and the signs, and you understand the aspects, you understand the houses, okay, the basics. Then this next little fun step is something I like to do uh, with big transits you know, big events like an eclipse. So what you're going to do, you're going to take the eclipse, you can go online and get the exact time of the eclipse. Like I live in Utah, so I know that the eclipse will be um, on the 20th, at somewhere around 10. I don't have the exact time in my head. Anyway, you create a chart, put in your location, put in the time for your time zone and, you know, the date, and then create a chart and then make a Davison, which a Davison chart is just a composite. It's the date, it's like a composite. It's the date between your two, the two charts dates. And it's also the time and it's also the location. So it's this actual place that exists, you know, or existed at some point in space and time. And what's really cool about this type of sort of forecasting method is you can, you can make one every day, you know, right when you wake up and it will show you, it'll you look back in your life so let's say you make a chart and um, like for me, for example, it puts me back into, I think, 1996 or something like that. I think it's like the midpoint, whatever, 20 years ago, because I'm 40, right? 41. So it's really cool because I, I, at that point in my life, I can remember things that were happening in my life and themes in my life that I'm repeating now. Like I was um, at, in college, I was finally in my major studying what I really love and was passionate about. Um, I was, you know, newly married, but like trying to figure that area out. That wasn't all sorted. My relationship stuff wasn't figured out. You know, that's kind of what's happening now. And then um, it just felt like my future was in front of me and I felt excited about the, the potential. If you look at the United States chart, this is really fun. Those of you who love to study, I don't know, if you enjoy looking at charts, if you're weird like me and you stay up until like two in the morning looking at <laughs> astrology charts, you'll enjoy this. But like the United States... I was looking at a few today, so I can't remember the exact date, but this eclipse puts us somewhere near the turn of the century. And I can't remember, I was looking at dates, I was kind of fast forwarding and rewinding, but we were somewhere around, I wanna say 1912 or so, kind of 1900s, 1912, and anyway, um, or maybe right before then, uh, but turn of the century, which was the time when we had a lot of big changes. There was the progressive movement you saw in our politics. Um, there was an interest in improving education. There's an interest in improving the uh, access to like our farmers to resources so that they could have uh, more, uh, you know, equanimity out there in the rural areas of the country, sort of trying to lift and raise the tide for all of our little boats. And so we're right now, and you also had the suffragette movements, you had, or some other things, there was science, and of course you had movements um, that had to do with technology and industry and expansion of our roadways, transportation. So all these kind of themes that we're sort of looking at now, we're kind of coming up to this next phase where <clears throat> the area of exploration we'll be seeing here in the United States is going to be what's going to happen uh, with technology as we start to see um, work businesses, you know, the hardware creation, I guess, move overseas. And how are things going to change here in the U.S. as our um, cars and whatnot and our buildings move away from using coal and oil-based fuels and etc. So just lots of big changes. And, and it's exciting. Personally, if you look at your chart, look at this eclipse. Like for me, it's pretty cool. The, the It's sun at... Um, I, think, I believe it's four degrees, I could, maybe it's six, I can't remember, four or six, I forget, of Gemini and the moon as well. It's a new moon, an exact like new moon, which it's, I want to say it's, it trines my sun, basically. I'm a four degree Libra sun. So kind of significant for me. And there's other things in the chart too that are, make perfect sense. Look at where Saturn is at, you know, like if you're in your life, you're like, I've been feeling kind of stuck in this certain area. But like, I'm not seeing it in my transits or I'm not seeing it 
maybe in my progressions. This is one of the techniques I used when I was able to predict that Donald Trump would win the, the presidential election. You know, there's techniques that I play with because I'm weirdly obsessed with astrology. <laughs> and I don't just, I mean, I love listening to what other people do. But if you have a sense like, huh, I have a hunch that maybe this might uncover something. This might make sense. Try it. Why not, right? Everything in life repeats itself. So I figure midpoint charts are, are really powerful. Uh, humans, we go through these little cycles and we tend to do the same thing over and over again. And so it kind of makes sense that if there's a big event in your life, maybe look back at the halfway point. Uh, you know, what does that look like? Where were you at halfway through your life from where you're at right now? And it, it kind of makes sense as well when you think about as you get older in life, the years go faster, right? When you're a little kid and you're looking at your sort of halfway chart, I mean, it's half of your life back then is you're, if you're four or five, you're like two, you know, it's, it's much more, uh, each half of your life, each year is worth, it's a larger ratio, you know, of the, of the whole. So as you get older, you've had lots of years. It's like, oh, I don't know, two sets of 20 years and a 20 and a half years. And so I'm like, hmm, so another year, just throw it on there. You know? So then we start measuring things in decades as you get older, right? It's just, it's like the Fibonacci sequence. It's, it's math. That's also, that's astrology. Aries is very si simple, singular. And then you move out to Pisces and it's like the shell. It's big, 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 right? It's exponential. So just a fun technique to play with. Um, you know, I'm kind of feeling like with this full moon, it, frankly, something's going to, for you, you're probably going to have something. If you've got plans, you might have plans disrupted. That's the biggest thing I've been seeing. And I think this is more of, as I said, a moon that has to do with your personal story, uh, the things you tell yourself about yourself, um, you know, and whether or not that belief that you have about yourself is true or not. Like, it, really, it just feels like this is a, a moon to help us set the stage for the rest of this year. And it almost feels like, it's a zero degree Leo moon, like the moon's like, I'm ready, I'm coming up for my big moment, you know, and then it's blocked by the earth, something gets in the way. And so if you're someone as well, who has like Aquarius, zero degree Aquarius planets, where the sun will be, there's an element there of wherever the sun's at during a full moon, it's like that area of the charts usually kind of overshadowed, the attention's going towards the moon. So it's kind of like this, wait, What's happening here? You know, we're kind of looking back and forth. So you need to look at your own personal chart to see if you've got things being hit. But in general, I feel like it's going to be um, something unexpected happening and uh, that comes to the surface that has to be taken care of. And I've actually heard several stories anecdotally that were like good things, like surprises. Oh, I didn't have to pay for that thing I thought I was going to have to pay for. Or um, there was a storm and so we ended up not having to do the move or, you know, stuff like that. So. It's not all doom and gloom. It's just something is going to happen. So, okay, um, we'll leave it at that. Just try that technique and uh, let me know what you think. All right. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.